Hello guys and welcome to Looking Project. Today I've got something rather interesting called the Pepsi phone or shall we call it the virus phone. Why? Let's find out. This phone has just been reset so everything is wiped. Let me show you what's going on. Let's keep the SIM card for now. Okay, my password is ready. And check this out. You saw that flickering and after that we've got AliExpress. Now, if the first thing that your new phone does is boot to AliExpress, then you realize you have a problem. Now you've got the installation blocked. Okay. Let's come back. Right, and you think everything was fine though, yeah? Check this out. You wanna go to settings, for example. Installation blocked, okay. So let's try. Can you see? PPP, installation blocked. Yoim installation blocked. Right. So how are you gonna how are you gonna use that phone then? <laughs> One thing you can do is stop your Wi-Fi. Go to settings if you can. Bloody hell. Right. Go to settings quickly. Go to apps. Sony install. And you're gonna be safe until your Wi-Fi is active once again. So basically you've got two options now. Check the phone in the bin or flush a neuron. So as you saw from the video, this phone is pretty much useless <laughs> out of the box and I'm seriously wondering how so many reviewers managed to use this phone and pull up a review. But anyway, there's a solution, there is a ROM you can flush, I'm gonna link it in the description down below, but one very valuable advice from me guys, make a backup of your NV RAM folder through TWRP or Team Win Recovery Project and when you flush your ROM, Come back to TWRP and restore the backup, otherwise you're going to have no IMEI number. After that you're going to be good to go and actually after that the phone is pretty decent, especially for 100 bucks. So let's jump to the review. So the phone came out originally in November 2015, but my particular unit was made in June 2016. Back in the day that was the most affordable, the cheapest full HD phone you can buy with a price stack of 110 US dollars and the box well it's quite nice in my opinion but let's see let's see what's inside check the Pepsi logo over here that's nice you've got your SIM ejection tool there's supposed to be some documents as well silicone case USB cable Headphones, which looks awful a lot like some other popular headphones. <laughs> I think you know what I'm talking about. And the things that I don't have in my box are the screen protector because I took it off and the charger, which I have no idea where it is. Uh, so the phone itself, the phone itself features a 5.5 inches full HD screen, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage, 8 core MTK processor, 13 megapixel rear camera, 5 megapixel front camera and pretty much that's it. Oh, and 3000 mAh battery. Pretty good specs for the price again. And the design and build quality are actually surprisingly nice. Check this out. And there's the Xiaomi Note 4X and as you can see the phones are pretty much identical. In terms of thickness, in terms of size, I mean in terms of color as well, 
the front is pretty much the same as well so basically in this case i can't really say that xiaomi copied this phone but i would say that that's a pretty much generic chinese design which most of the manufacturers rely on because it's i mean it's okay it gets the job done and if you if we see closely you've got the power button over here volume rockers here 3.5 mil jack um, you've got a SIM tray which is one SIM slot and one micro SD slot. At the bottom we've got microphone, we've got one bottom firing mono speaker and micro USB charging port over here. At the back we've got a fingerprint reader, flash and a 13 megapixel camera. This is made of metal, it's not the best metal in the world, the Xiaomi feels a little bit smoother, but at least you've got totally no fingerprints left over here. Now when it comes down to the fingerprint reader, it is slow, but at least it works all the time. Check this out. Check this out. Yeah, it, it, takes, it, it takes a good second, it takes a good second, but at least it's reliable and it unlocks your phone every single time. And when we talk about the display, 5.5 inches, Full HD, $100, I would say that I'm pretty impressed with the screen. The maximum brightness, as you can see, is kind of on 60% already, the colors are really good, it's very nicely calibrated, of course you don't have the option to tweak the colors yourself, but overall I'm pretty happy with the screen to be honest with you guys the second thing that i want to talk about is the sound and um having just one bottom firing speaker let me show you the sound quickly check this out maximum volume Now what I would say with the sound is that the volume is really not great and as well as the quality. So basically the speaker, well, I mean it's okay for notifications and, um, <laughs> and ringtones, but if you want to consume any kind of media, the speaker is really not good. And the, the situation is more or less similar with the headphone jack. It's relatively loud, it's relatively loud, but um, the quality and the bass is just not there. So in terms of sound, well, I can't really, <laughs> I can't really recommend this phone if that's what you do. Which comes down to our battery test. Now, when it comes down to battery life, guys, the thing that differentiates me from the other channels is that I actually use my phones in real time, so I can give you <laughs> the most accurate uh, battery results according to my usage, which is usually quite heavy. So let's see what the Pepsi phone with 3,000 milliamp hour batteries. Can achieve as you can see that is my usage over here i've got four hours of screen on time here over here i've got three hours 37 minutes over here i've got three hours two hours 23 minutes four hours three hours 17 minutes 2 hours 48 minutes so basically the battery life that you can expect from this phone is between two and a half hours and four hours screen on time which is relatively how can i put it okay let's call it okay because the battery life is the same as the lg g5 which uh <laughs> which is a flagship basically and now the recharge time the phone itself doesn't really support you know any kind of fast charging but let's check this out in 30 minutes I managed to top up 28%, 1 hour 59, 1 hour 30 minutes 90% and 1 hour 45 minutes 100% which is a very respectable score considering that as I said there is no fast charging and the phone is relatively cheap. So charging times are pretty much okay. And now let's jump to the software itself, as I said um, you have to root this phone, you have to flush the clean ROM and after that the performance is actually quite snappy as you can see over here multitasking works well and relatively fast let's open up google plus which is uh, well a heavy app and they still haven't optimized it properly uh, but as you can see i mean it's okay the performance is pretty much okay let's jump to the multitasking let's go to the menu over here I mean, it's okay, it's fine. Um, for two gigs of RAM, I mean, I can't really, I can't really complain. Of course, when you do a benchmark like Basemark OS is gonna give you uh, more detailed breakdown of what to expect. And basically, when you see those results, 
you <laughs> what you see is that the system is pretty well optimized um, the memory they're using a cheap slow memory the graphics are poor and the web performance is not very good uh, which brings us down to the gaming performance which is not very good as well um, let me show you when you go to gallery i've got i've got another screenshot over here on epic citadel now epic citadel is giving me 52 fps on high quality which means that basically you should be able to get a pretty much you know overall um gaming performance out of this phone but that's not exactly the case because check this out high quality not very high quality which means that if the game doesn't have any kind of settings to adjust the quality you're gonna run on the highest settings and you're gonna see quite a lot of luck let me show you one game um more to combat i couldn't really download it because i've got no available space <laughs> simply because it's a 16 gig phone and i didn't bother to put my uh, memory card in but anyway i'm gonna show you just um, how to use and i can easily conclude uh, that for gaming is i mean if you play light games it's okay it's just about okay but if you play something heavy it's gonna be pretty much useless let's check this out as you can see the loading times are okay and let's check this out I mean, as you can see, it's definitely playable. It is playable, but as I said, it's playable only on the lightweight games. The heavy games, just, just, just forget about it. Which brings us down to the heat. This phone doesn't really hit that much, actually. Um, I'm overall happy because most of the cheap phones, they either don't have a good performance or they heat up quite a lot. So this one, yes, the performance is not very good, but at least it doesn't heat up that much. Oh, which brings us to the camera. Um, <laughs> now the camera, let's check it out. It's a little bit laggy. I mean, taking a photo takes quite a lot of time. And when you open up this menu, as you can see, well, what the hell is that? Uh, so the camera up, I'm really not impressed. You're better off using something like, where is it? Open camera. Um, open camera over here. Yeah, which is going to give you overall better results. But I mean, shutter times are slow as well. And don't expect any miracles. Now, let me jump to the gallery and show you a couple of photos that I took with this phone. Um, and actually, when it comes down to the selfie cam, I'm actually quite surprised, to be honest with you, because the selfie cam is good. I mean, check this out. The selfie cam for a 5 megapixel budget cam is actually good. I mean, check, check the level of details here. That's pretty good to my book. And of course, I mean, the low light performance is pretty much bad. I mean, not very impressive, but what did you expect from a $100 phone? Um, you can see quite a lot of, you know, blur going on over here. And the picture is quite fuzzy. But uh, when you go, when, <laughs> I mean, when you go outside, of course, you can as well see quite a lot of sort of fuzziness. But at least the colors and, and the overall contrast are spot on. Um, the autofocus is, is slow, but at least it works. There is a, there is an HDR option, which as you can see, it gets the job done. I mean, they're not the best pictures in the world, but uh, I mean, for hundred dollars, you can't really expect much than that. I would say, I would say it's okay. I would say it's fine. It it gets the job done. Um, but another thing, when we go to video, let's check the video out. Okay guys, so it's time to put the Pepsi phone to the test. Let me tell you that the video clip looks fantastic on the screen, but it's another thing when we upload it over the computer. Uh, what else? So let's see how the stabilization works. I'm gonna do a little bit like that, a little bit like that. Let's check the sky, the dynamic range a little bit. Let's go back to Earth. And uh, the thing that I'm most important, the thing that I'm most interested in, how the stabilization works. There is no optical image stabilization, only digital. But uh, in some phones, that proves to be 
quite a good option as well. So let me upload it and see how the quality is. So as you saw, the video is not very good. I mean, there is totally no optical or at least digital image stabilization. So videos, definitely thumbs down. So where does that leave us with the Pepsi Phone P1S made by Kobe? Unfortunately, I can't really recommend this phone guys simply because of the level of involvement you have to put on to flash on your firmware and to get this phone uh, into a, you know, normal working conditions as any other phone basically. Otherwise, it's pretty good conversation starter. Nobody has ever heard of the Pepsi Phone and they're like, oh, Pepsi Phone, tell me about it. What was this phone about? So today, in 2017, you're better off with the Xiaomi. It looks like exactly the same, um, <laughs> but it usually has better specs. Um, and uh, the, the Note 4X that I just showed you is just about, you know, $20, $30 more expensive. I'm gonna link it in the, in the description down below. You can check my review as well. So yeah, just, just forget about it and, uh, and get a Xiaomi. Okay, thank you very much for watching guys and adios.